I just remember feeling like the Lord just whispered into my heart, Hope, you're saved. You love me. You are completely committed to me, but you are not free. And I didn't come just to save you. I came to set you free. You know, I wish I could say the lowest points in my life was like one time, but it hasn't been just one time. It's been several times that I found myself like in a real dark pit, emotionally and mentally. And I think the first really significant time was in my 30s. I was, I just had my second baby. Um, my parents had just gone through a, just a brutally painful divorce. I'd been on staff at a church for 10 years, serving the Lord at that point for, you know, a good 12 years faithfully. And I was doing all the things that you're supposed to do. I was going to church. I was tithing. I was loving my neighbor. I was serving. I was a, a, a faithful wife, still a faithful wife. I was doing all the things that you're supposed to do, keeping all the roles. And yet, internally, I was just riddled with so much anger and, and what I said before, insecurity and fear and hopelessness and feeling unworthy and feeling like I was never gonna actually be better, if that makes any sense. Like I just so desperately wanted to be better at, at anything and everything. And it's funny, you don't plan your breakdown, you don't, prepare for it. You don't, you know, mark it on the calendar. This is the day that I'm going to fall apart. This is the day that God's going to meet me. It just happens and you never know what's going to trigger it. And for me, it was such a simple trigger. It wasn't even anything remarkable. It was just disappointing a friend. And suddenly it was like, it was the final straw that just broke the camel's back and I unraveled. And I remember I went into such a dark place. I didn't get out of my bed for three days. I didn't talk. I didn't eat. I wasn't taking care of my kids. My husband was so worried. And I remember him coming in and he just said, oh, like, I think we have to check you into a hospital. He's like, I, I don't know how to help you. I don't think you know how to help yourself. And I remember laying in my bed and thinking, what? What has gotten me here? Like, how does just such a simple moment lead to such devastating results? And wanting to just re rewind, like just go to three days before and start over and figure out like how to not get to that place. But the thing is, I didn't get there in three days. I had gotten there over 30 plus years of just stuffing and ignoring and not believing that God actually could be my healer and bring freedom. And I'll never forget, it was just honestly the grace of God. I got out of the bed and I laid on my carpet floor and I just, I don't think I wept. I don't think I was just silent. I just laid on that carpet and I thought, I'm not going to move here until God speaks to me. And that was the moment when God said, you're safe, but you're not free. And if you will let me into this journey, I'm going to walk out a path of freedom for you. And I found that being on the floor at Jesus' feet was the hardest and the scariest place to be. But it's the only place I found freedom. It's the only place I found healing. It's the only place that I found redemption. I think that there is nothing greater than the moment when you realize you just cannot heal yourself. And that you don't have to figure it out by yourself. And that you can reach out to God and people and say, I don't know how to fix this. We don't leave enough room for people to just say, I need help. I don't know how to hurdle this. I don't know how to get over this mountain and not shaming them with the sense of, you don't have enough faith. You haven't prayed enough prayers. You haven't done enough freedom weekends or enough Bible studies or insert blank. And I just wanna to speak to that person right now 
God doesn't need you to do anything else to get better, except just get at His feet and ask Him to do the thing that He and only He can do, which is bring healing and hope and peace and restoration to the deepest, most broken parts of your heart and your soul. Because I have, I have experienced Him do that in my life.